talk about uh, Sophia Flow Plus hash pressing catheter first line thrombectomy approach. Uh, so um, the objective, so we can, I'm going to talk quickly about the uh, catheter indications, some specifications, uh, design features, uh, uh, trackability with some videos to uh, demonstrate uh, how well it works and then some uh, experience uh, with the Sophia uh, Flow Plus catheter uh, or in our uh, hands. So uh, this catheter is a gray, uh, green colored interesting device um, that's uh, together with the GOMCO 405 aspiration pump and the microvention tubing kit. It's basically as expected intended for uh, revascularization of patients with acute ischemic stroke in the anterior circulation, M1, M2, and basilar and vertebral arteries within four, eight hours. Whether the patients fail TPA or, or um, not eligible TPA, they were still, they're still candidate uh, officially for the use of this catheter. So there's two um, versions of the uh, six, fan, six French Sophia Flow Plus um, out there. The main difference is the length of the shaft. So there's about a six centimeter difference. So one catheter's uh, shaft is about 112 centimeters, the other one is 106. The, tip, uh, the tips are identical, and there's a 19 centimeter um, soft uh, tip at the end of the catheters that does the magic and goes around the tortuous uh, vessels. The inner diameter is 070, uh, the outer diameter is around 2.1 millimeters, and um, uh, both, both of them have straight tips, so there's no bend at the end. Um, I'm stuck here a little bit. Oh, there you go. So um, the design and features, so it's a hybrid braid uh, coil construction. Uh, basically, um, uh, the coil reinforcement provides a superior uh, kink resistance, and then the braid uh, does the flexibility, shapeability, torqueability part of the job. Um, the dual layer uh, braid and coil basically helps to maintain inner aspiration lumen intensity, and then provides one-to-one -one, uh, push-pull control of the device. Uh, the distal construction is the one that I was uh, pointing out, that very soft tip that basically provides the smooth navigation to, uh, without causing vasospasm. And then the proximal segment is the key for support. Uh, that's how we're able to advance the catheter distal locations. I'll show some examples of that. Um, the tubing kit that com it comes with is a large ID, uh, distal and proximal high flow tubing system, uh, kink resistant, and then you have this stopcock, which is uh, kind of unique. The, you can see the hole here in the middle is, is probably one of the largest ones you can find, uh, and basically it does not limit the aspiration power. And the proximal connector is pretty standard, connects to, um, to the pump without vacuum leak. And so this is an animation of the catheter and how it works, and it's actually showing um, a newer uh, device together with the Sophia Flow Plus called the Wedge. Uh, uh, the idea is that um, it's not a microcatheter, it's not an intermediate catheter, it's something just to help the catheter uh, around uh, bends and, and uh, ledges and uh, avoid uh, catching on, uh, for example, the ophthalmic origin. The truth is that uh, even without this, the, the catheter uh, does an amazing job as I'll show you in the next couple of videos, but the idea is great to kind of help it uh, uh, go through these difficult areas and then do what it has to do, just basically suction the, the clot out. Um, so this is a real life example. So basically, um, the um, Sophia is a thread up uh, over just a micro wire. And so you see coming up there uh, and stuck for a little bit at the ophthalmic and then just goes up into the MCA. So uh, it's, um, it's really, really smooth and, and, and I see this uh, often. This is not a unique uh, scenario. Another example is this is uh, the one that I was talking about. So this, this is a radial approach for a vertebral artery catheterization with the Sophia. And there, you can see there's no shuttle, no guide catheter, not, catheter nothing. It's just basically by itself thread up over the wire and goes around the tortuous in the ladder of view without any problems. So that's uh, a big benefit. And this is a little bit harder to see if you can see the lateral view a little bit here. Uh, it's a relatively straight uh, uh, patient, but um, 
you can see the catheter gets uh, stuck for a second in the ophthalmic, but the, actually it just uh, pushes over, so it starts again. So um, uh, that's uh, often seen. So in addition, the same patient, uh, when I was getting through, uh, getting past this band here, uh, initially I pulled it back a little bit, and then it just uh, basically advances. Sorry, the, uh, um, the roadmap is a little bit off, but if you follow it on the A now, it went up all the way to the M1 segment where it's supposed to. So it's very trackable and um, uh, very easy to use. So another example that uh, we presented some time ago when we used um, the Sophia Flow Plus uh, without a guiding catheter was a case when somebody came with a high NIH uh, acute stroke and uh, after groin access, we, uh, we realized that uh, the patient had a severe aortoelic stenosis near occlusion that we did not know about. And so we could get through the standard diagnostic catheter, but not with the shuttle that we oftentimes use or balloon guide or something. So um, in this case, uh, we just uh, did the diagnostic. There was an IC terminus occlusion, and then we fed the longer um, Sophia Plus um, catheter uh, directly um, without any sort of support, and we're able to um, uh, achieve a uh, successful uh, TK3 thrown back to me in this patient um, with no complications and excellent rec clinical recovery. So you can, there are certain, certain things that you can certainly come up with that you didn't think of before. So it, it's, um, uh, our, one of our early results is it was a very small retrospective review with this catheter in 2016, so a couple of years ago. It was only nine patients, three females, a median age 63, uh, median uh, initial NIH was 18. And uh, there were seven first-line aspiration approaches and two uh, where we started with the aspiration together with the stent retriever. The median recanalization time was 33 minutes and the tiki 2 b was almost 90%. Uh, although this is a, sh a very small uh, study, but it kind of encouraged us to, to use this catheter more and uh, over the years um, we have. And uh, I collected some data over the little bit less, well, a little bit more than two years. And um, what, uh, what I found was that uh, in more than 220 cases, we used some sort of an aspiration suction catheter in our cases, and 75% uh, of those uh, SOFIA catheter was used uh, first line, uh, with or without the stand retriever. And several more cases, the SOFIA was switched to from another catheter um, for a total of uh, almost 78% of cases. And in only 2% of cases, uh, the SOFIA was switched to another catheter. Uh, so uh, this is the, the basically the breakdown of, of the total number of cases. There were 143 that were started first line, SOFIA uh, Flow Plus catheter, again, with and without stent retriever. So, but 62% of all these cases were started with the SOFIA uh, uh, Flow Plus solo, so not with a stent retriever, just first line. So without an injective device, and uh, we're completed with or without uh, a device. And if you break it down more, about 70% of, of these cases were started um, uh, and completed with the uh, Sophia Plus uh, in one pass, and almost 80% it was the cases were started and completed with the Sophia Plus only without a junk device uh, in one to three passes, and there were about 20% cases that where we um, had to use something else. And of the o overall uh, group, about 38% were started with both uh, Sophia first line and injunctive device. So that just the first, there's going to be a lot of numbers, but I try to keep it clear. clear. So the first, uh, if you look at the whole group, when we started uh, with a Flow Plus, Plus Minus, Tent River, mean age was 70, 50% females, 40% TPA. The median recan time was 44 minutes. Uh, first pass, uh, Tiki 2B, 62%, but the final Tiki 2B3 rate was 84%. And then the initial median NIH was high, but the discharge was uh, much better at 35 so uh, I'm going to now break it down to the, for the group that when we started with the Sophia only uh, as solo and then finished with either just the Sophia or with something else. And so it's a very similar group as the other one, very similar mean age and female-male ratio. 
Uh, the median recant time is a little bit shorter in this group, uh, but the first pass TK2 B3 and the final TK2 B3 were quite comparable with the overall cohort, and the discharge uh, median NI stroke scale was also very uh, favorable at three. Uh, so this group is, um, I'm excited to talk about this one, is the one uh, that uh, we started with uh, Sophia, the case with the Sophia Plus and finished the case in one pass without anything else. And so uh, this represented about 43% of the whole Sophia cohort and about 70% of all cases when we just started with the Sophia as a first line. Uh, very similar um, ratios as before. Uh, TPA rate is also almost 40%, median pre-stroke MRS was uh, one. And so um, the, this is the group that had the shortest recanalization time of the entire cohort, so only 33 minutes. And uh, one of the highest TK2B3 recanalization rates at 92%. Uh, and then the, NI, the discharge NIH again uh, significantly dropped um, showing favorable clinical outcomes as well. So one last group, and then I'll stop with all these numbers, but uh, this is the one, the group that I also wanted to mention because this is uh, uh, the group that uh, we started with Sophia, finished with Sophia, only nothing else, just the Sophia, and uh, basically uh, represented about 78% of all uh, uh, first-line Sophia cases. Uh, the median recant time is very favorable. The recanization rate is also almost 90%. And then the discharge NIH, again, very favorable outcomes at two. Um, so a lot of numbers, one of those, so I thought I'd just basically put it on a table and it's maybe easier to see what we're dealing with. So the upper uh, row is the, co the entire cohort as a reference. And then um, you can see in red the Sophia plus solo in one pass. Uh, the median recant time, 33. The, when you do it for more than two passes, you see there's only a few cases. It was much higher, and you see the same thing with stent retriever adjunct use, uh, uh, higher for two passes than one, so it seems to be a trend. Obviously, um, uh, with three passes or more, the, the recant time is even longer. But interestingly, you see the reverse trend in the recanalization rate. So once you go past the first pass, your recanalization rates drop for both just solo uh, Sophia use or with a junk device. And the lowest is if you go three or more passes, it's like much, much lower success rate. The uh, median initial NIHs are the same, but the discharge NIHs again follow this pattern. Uh, so if you have successful first pass, you have a much higher chance for both Sophia solo and for, with a junk device to have a, a more favorable a discharge NIH and outcome, and worse for three passes. To summarize it for um, all SOFIA cases, for one pass, two pass, and three passes, as expected, uh, increasing median recanalization times with more passes, not a, that's not unusual, and then the, the recanalization TK2B3 rates, as you see, uh, significantly dropped with uh, more attempts, um, and then the uh, median discharge NIH is are definitely the lowest with the first successful attempt. So um, complications-wise, the entire cohort had about 3.4%. When we only did one pass, it was 2.1. Two pass cases higher at four, and the three pass at 4.8%, major complication rate. So uh, as far as where the patients went, so the first row, um, the first column is the reference for the whole group, and then the upper row is the home discharge, and the lower row is the mortality, not procedural mortality, but overall mortality. And as you can expect, uh, um, much more patients go home with first pass, so about 50% or so go home. Uh, and once you go to two passes, it, that number drops significantly in three passes as well. And with three passes, you also see um, higher mortality, so it's a nice effect. So um, in summary, um, uh, basically, almost 80% of cases uh, that were started with Sophia uh, Flow Plus solo uh, were completed uh, without injecting device in our hands uh, in one to three passes. Um, there were shorter recanalization times seen with first pass success, and that was the shortest actually with the Sophia Flow Plus first line alone. 
Um, the highest Tuki 2B3 recolonization rates uh, were seen during first pass, as, uh, as demonstrated by others as well, and the gradual decline during subsequent passes. Lowest complications rates were seen with the SOFIA Plus in one pass, and uh, low discharge NIH and increased home discharges, again, were also seen uh, uh, with uh, first, first line uh, SOFIA Plus uh, thrown back to me. So, um, in conclusion, um, achieving for first pass success seems to be very important. It should be one of the primary goals of mechanical thrombectomy. Uh, effective and safe first line uh, devices like the Sophia Plus, uh, Flow Plus, uh, aspiration catheter have a crucial role in um, overall procedural and clinical success. And the uh, choice of first line uh, device and technique is, is key to the successful thrombectomy and better patient uh, outcomes. Thank you.